Onivia, League of Legends Highlights. And it's going to be a Huey. Huey. I mean, last time Faker played, played... Okay, you know, we would talk a little bit about... Uh-huh. Is Faker going to get the POG? Uh, of uh, Quantum Freaks before they decided that more dragons is the way that we win. And that's, uh, that's how it sort of worked. Sponge coming on over to help DRX out as Ona thinking about finding an opportunity. And there is a fantastic Magnus Storm into a double bubble from Carrier. Kumiyushi now dashing in. Teddy explodes as Faker's ultimate goes off. And that is first blood for the Lucian. And Faker able to pick one up on the back end of that one as well. And DRX and change. He's going to be the lead here is now Sponge looking for Faker. He's just going to wander northward, but yeah, who is going to be able to find that angle? There is a twisted advance in, and the explosive charge is going to be enough. Yeah, who locks that one down? So there's the first kill for DRX as Rascal closing the distance onto Zayas as well. He finds himself a gold cup, but still will be culled. Don't know whether he's necessarily the meek though, as Destiny going to be utilized here over the wall. What about Aurelian Soul, you know? And stuff what about like Hawk? But he has little feet. You yeah, know? I guess. Porky has little feet in his yeah, plane. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, maybe we'll just, we'll see whether we can get to a point where Nami can get some movement speed scaling uh, like yeah, Cassiopeia does. I think it, it would just make thematic sense. And Yehu does safely rocket jump his way out. There's a lot of testing the waters here for T1, trying to find an angle, trying to get in there, and all the while just getting more things around the map. Yeah, I will say, kind of a good advertisement for Frozen Heart with how fed the first turret for DRX. That is certainly good news. Yeah, uh, obviously just on a great take down those towers, and T1 had kind of moved that pressure down towards the dragon. Fake had been clearing ways on the top side, he moves mid, Guma moves towards dragon, they get that. That's the whole point, uh, just for nothing there, as Grand Entrance comes in, good battle dance from Fleta, getting himself out of the way of the tidal wave, but still, Gumushi takes half of Teddy's health bar by just pressing his R button. And, and so that's just free soul uh, point. Yeah, no real contest, and now they're trying to put the Herald down mid. They succeed. But it's difficult to really follow up and... Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, well, Teddy is just going to charge the turret. Let's see how he's going to do it. There's a Feather Storm. That gets him up there as Ona was kind of baited into this one. He will go down as the first kill, but Sponge is traded off as well. Destiny's going to come forward and Rascal... Yeah, he is just dead. It's a double kill for the Twisted Fate. Azaeus not finished just yet. He could see some low health bars. And he just caught up to Gumiyushi's build six minutes later. He finished his uh, his rapid fire cannon. What? Wanted to put it to use. Unless I got it. This is why they picked Zaya because that's the only AD carry who you could send into that situation and not immediately have them get one shot. Letters moving in. They do spot the fact that the Tristana is down here. Is now Faker not going to find too much? Ulti is going to be thrown over as Yahoo just. Dives on in, there's the flash forward, Quickness comes down and Faker is just going to be eliminated. That's a kill for Yehu, so something on the other side of the rift here is T1. Um, speaking of the other side of the rift, they're going to see two people in the bottom lane and say it's Baron in time. Yeah, and you know, essentially with the Twisted Fate there, they have 280 carries, so it is going down fairly quickly. Extremely quickly, for 21 and a half minutes, kind of ludicrous, but now Sponge is making his way forward. Tidal Wave is going to get a lot of value as the Feather Storm comes out. And now the Magnus Storm is going to catch Teddy, and he is just obliterated. Gumiyushi, so much damage as he's dashing after the Renekton as well. They kept the Baron leashed, and they're going to look for that one now as T1. The foot is never coming off the gas this game. Yep, yeah, and the thing is, I actually like the play DRX for went on the bot side. Oh, you got to try and get something, but oh my god, okay. Uh, there's um, yeah. all three of those kills going but over to the Lucian. You got to try and get something. It's completed already as item number three at 22 minutes. Interesting, we often see like this. Okay, ulti going to connect onto Sponge here. The unending despair is named pretty well here for DRX right now, but Sponge is going to be able to keep himself alive, even able to walk back and get a bit of extra health from that redemption. But it's not going to save this inhibitor turret. T1 going to be able to break that one open. They've got five uh, Void Grubs as well, and so the little mites help them take down these structures. So they are going to be able to break open the base. Look for a bit of a... I think it's very hard to expect them to win this, but... Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, oh. Teddy taking a lot of damage. Yeah, running low on the wasn't even on the screen. It's so unfair. Now, reaction. Oh, my God! Rascal taking so much damage! Does get a decent amount of uh, health back with the Culver Meek, but he is still really dead. And Kerry now chasing after Faker, who's running real quick. Nature grasping at T1, but Faker is just going to say, no, thank you, Mr. Tree. 
and uh, Sponge is going to join his crocodile. Now a couple of 80 carries and a Rakan is all that's left of DRX to try and help this one. Shattering Strike onto Pleta, but not going to really do too much there. And T1, they've lost uh, interest in the Dragon. They're just going to take this inner turret while they can. Yep, and so they're opting just to peel away, take the objective. They can keep pressuring, you know, using these sideways really effectively. Often it's Zayas pushing the wave in, the rest of them will take over. And DRX probably just hoping they can go to, to game two at this point. Yeah, and the inhibitor turret going to be taken down. Inhibitor will follow there as well. He loses that 1v1 pretty hard. Yeah, it's a little bit of a worry here. As Faker is going to be pushed back into DRX. He will be taken down first off as Pleta somehow survives, but Sponge not going to be so lucky. And yeah, that 1v1 like you were talking about, the Twist Fate's going to take that as Bubble going to be avoided, but that is Featherstorm now on cooldown for Teddy. He has to be very, very careful as Yahoo diving forward, trying to find Gumiyushi, who is just going to flash his way out. The Destiny going to be utilized as back in base. They're trying to defend against this Twisted Fate, and Yehu, he's going to be put into the bubble prison. Owner is going to take the soul. Pleta will die as these cards do find him, and he will take down the Nexus. T1, an absolute flattening of DRX in game number one. Yeah, in a very roundabout way in which the game was finished.